thank you shudanshu for giving me this opportunity uh, to share my experience knowledge and wisdom with uh, your listeners uh, i am shashank dubey uh, i am having a uh, experience of 10 years uh, basically uh, in the field of digital transformation and and the banking industry basically i started uh, my career in uh, cognizant uh, where i worked with a uh, investment banking giant for close to 2 and 1/2 years there after i moved to uh, canara bank uh wherein i i headed a different departments uh, basically um, credit portfolio wealth management agriculture i mean i've seen overall the structure of how banking industry moves uh, in a traditional pattern be- being canara bank a psu bank uh then i decided to plunge myself to more uh, uh, into a learning phase uh, i enrolled for an mba program from iim calcutta so uh i pursued a one year mba from am calcutta then i uh, from am calcutta i moved into a digital transformation company called genpack where uh, i am supporting a, a traditional banking giant from australia so this is a broad journey about how i moved myself in, into a corporate world correct so uh, there are see while i was working in canara bank uh, there are a lot of factors that actually motivated me to uh, take a more dynamic role in terms of uh, transforming a traditional bank first of all uh, as we see uh, the fintech have already disrupted the traditional banking system uh, there are multiple uh, platforms in need of credit uh in managing the risk managing the exposures of traditional bank secondly uh i felt uh, while working in a bank uh, my learning and growth was a uh, limited because uh, you you are working in an uh, typical bureaucratic organization where you have a time based promotion rather than your uh, skills and your learning was matter so i then i decided to like uh, pursue mba and then from mba i transform my skill set and interest into a area of digital transformation so, uh, the last and not the least uh, see uh, the traditional uh, psu bank lacks the culture of uh, agility and innovation so i was more keen to uh, work in an organization which were more fast which can speed the pace of the transformation happening around the banking industry so that's why i have chosen from working from psu bank to a genpack which is more agile okay so uh, till now my journey is filled with uh, transformative experience and valuable learnings uh the key differences that i observed while working uh, in a uh, while wo- i was working in a traditional bank to the working in a uh, agile uh, organization like genpack first is uh, the scale of adaptability and innovation uh in genpack we readily adopt the emerging technologies that are coming into the market right now as we see as we speak uh, generative ai is making lot of buzz in the industry so we have adopted generative ai in in our core kpi in our core kra so the so i can say agility and innovation is a heart of uh, digital transformation company while which was missing in canara bank second thing is a uh, technological exposure uh, canara bank as an organization is working in a on a legacy system which which is not capable enough to uh, take data insight to uh, adopt ai ml and many other technology while uh, genpack as is assisting the traditional bank to adopt such technology and drive innovation so yes technological exposure is a second difference key difference that i found uh, third is cross cultural collaboration uh, in genpack uh, because if you are transforming any legacy organization you have to have the understanding of cross cross functional skill set at one point of time you have to have the understanding of data at other point of time you have to have the understanding of automation and uh, uh, implementing digital tools right so this was primarily missing in both these uh, in canara bank which is right now we are pursuing in genpack and the last not the least is the customer centering approach 
in genpack our kra is basically aligned to what we are going to deliver for the client if client is uh, wants to reduce the cost for their operation we aligned ourselves to reduce the cost of the operations uh, for the client which was missing uh, in a canara bank why basically because we have a canara bank as an organization have a huge uh, customer base which was which was very different in terms of strata like you are serving at one point of time you're serving a rural customer you, at second point of time you are serving a metro and urban customer which have different aspirations so this is the primary strength i found in while work uh, fintech and traditional bank needs to go uh, on a collaborative nature in the future that's what i can gain understand the examples that i can refer to from my experience uh, there are couple of example i'll quote first is a digital payment solution everyone uh, knows about paypal so paypal has partnered with different banking uh, uh, organization in the world and partner with itself with a banking ecosystem to provide faster and convenient experience in a in a secure digital payment right uh, so while leveraging fintech banking organization can send the payment out of a blink right this is the first example i can correlate second thing is a digital lending platform right now a traditional bank what they are doing is they are collaborating with different platform to cater the needs of the customer on a very scalable manner i will i'll quote one example uh, there's a platform called lending club which provide the immediate processing of personal loans uh, in say 5 to 10 minutes by analyzing the data set or uh, like sibil your credit worthiness your risk everything is gets analyzed in a 5 to 10 minutes and your personal loan can be credited uh, within 15 minutes and the last not the least is the open banking initiative so what is happening is through api which is application programming interface many bank can open uh, their capabilities to the platform where a platform is having the customer base and banking uh, organization can sell their product through uh, their platform like in amazon we can see there are a lot of credit cards available right now uh, which is co branded credit card in swiggy in every other platform we can see the co branded credit cards are available right now which is which can happen because of the uh, application programming interface so api banking is the next disruption that has happened what i can see uh, as terms of future outlook is the increase in collaboration so traditional bank want to harness uh, the speed and agility of the fintech to expand their growth footprint secondly customer nowadays are more into tech the mobile penetration in india has been increased by 70% so customer now want banking into their fingertips so fintech will play a pivotal role in shaping the customer experience as such uh moving forward with the uh, data and uh, automation opportunity available within a banking organization the cost will be a major factor which will decide the uh, balance sheet health of the traditional bank so yes with through automation traditional bank will reduce the cost and through ai and data banks will be uh, bank will understand how the customer will behave in the future so these are uh, the outlook what i can see the traditional bank be, along with the fintech will so uh, for uh, answering this question let me uh, let me give you a real time scenario what we have faced so for a bank <clears throat> their primary criteria which they gave us to reduce the cost so for reducing the cost of the operation we need to have a minimum manual intervention in their end to end process so what we did we identified certain processes where digital solution can be employed and we can reduce the number of uh, full time employees or ft ft count so to employ the solution the skill set that is required was robotic process automation so uh, as you know uh, 
many of the IT folks do know, Blue Prism is one of the uh, most advanced version of RP automation platform. So when we uh, search in our team, which uh, employees having ability to implement uh, uh, Blue Prism, we found only two to three employees that can do that. So to match the skill gap requirement as per the need of the cust uh, customer or the client, we have identified, we have noted down the current skill set available with each employees. This is the first step we uh, we have considered step we have taken into our country's consideration. Second thing is what we did, we uh, programmed a tailored trainings for these employees as per the future need. Like uh, right, right now we have uh, we are undergoing a tremendous uh, journey uh, of learning in terms of understanding generative AI. Uh, understanding RPA tools, understanding uh, AI and ML, understanding natural language processing. So all these are emerging texts, understanding blockchain. So these are the uh, tailored training program according to the interest as well as the need of the future. And uh, last one is uh, in, our, in the Genpact, we have a culture of continuous learning. Your KRA, your bonuses, your salary variable pay will depend on a, uh, how much learning capability do you have so that it will match the requirement of the market right so in this way we are actually bridging the gap of the skill set present in the system and also making the employee more agile and more uh, more learned in terms of technology as well as the need of the time See, if you consider the end-to-end -end, uh, banking value chain, there are multiple steps involved which require the manual intervention, which, which are repetitive in nature, which can be automated, which can be, uh, which can influence the decision making. So AI in this case, in a banking value chain have a profound impact and FinTech uh, is creating a platform to do so. Right, I'll give some example. Uh, if you see the credit scoring and risk assessment, right now there are many platforms available that can drive the risk assessment through uh, AI driven algorithms. Right, so we have a vast amount of customer data set available right now with a traditional bank. What they need is the capability to understand the risk of the particular customer through the past record that is available with them. Right, this is the first. Uh, instance I can I can share with you the second is uh, there are like right uh, as per the RBI data banks are prone to uh, more fraud and more risk exposure through their traditional working uh, RBI have mentioned around uh, uh, if I'm not wrong 75% of the banking fraud happened because of the lack of the digital infrastructure present in the current banking system. So through AI, we can actually detect if there is a possibility of fraud in that particular space. So a fraud detection is a greater uh, capability of AI. Third is uh, increased in customer experience. Right now we can see every banking organization have adopted the chatbots. Right. So AI driven chatbot have reduced the need of human intervention in terms of talking about the banking needs. Uh, there are multiple other uh, possibilities of AI intervention in the banking value chain. We can talk about, about personalized financial advice in the wealth management uh, uh, service line. Uh, we have uh, the wealth advisor which, uh, which actually uh, provide us how we invest our fund. Uh, in capital market, in the stock market. So we have uh, the personal financial advice based on the risk uh, capability of a customer and the uh, past record of the market. So through these data points, we can have the AI driven uh, financial advisor. And last not the least, uh, if you see the regulatory compliance uh, in banking sector, which is very, very regulated market financial market is very very regulated in terms of uh, RBI guidelines, CB guidelines. So uh, AI can help bank and fintech company to ensure the complex compliance and evolving regulation by automating 
processes like transaction monitoring reporting at all yeah so uh, to answer this question i'll i'll quote one example what i have observed in my uh, days during canara bank uh, we had a uh, we had a golden segment present in canara bank so what happened was uh, to classify the particular ornament as gold ornament we have to depend on the valuer valuer will verify that particular gold ornament is a uh, is made up of how much of purity so customer collaborated with valuer and gave the bank uh, a fake gold and that fraud was up amount to around 50 crores in a, that particular region uh, in 6 months so you can see the kind of loss the bank can have in terms of uh, financial loss and the reputational loss because of all kinds of fraud how digital can intervene in this system we right now bank have changed their method they have now the digital uh, tool available which can check the purity of the gold as well as uh, the veracity of the gold so we have eliminated the need of the valuer in such case there are numerous examples available in in terms of how digital is driving uh, bank to become more robust become more compliant and be, be, and become less fraud prone why customer uh, in general is uh, uh, complaining about uh, more fraud in terms of ott otp driven or maybe because of they they are less they doesn't know how to behave in a changing environment so there is a certainly a gap in terms of educating the customer to become more aware about how to deal with uh, the general fraud is happening around uh, and and one thing more if we cannot share the otp that that fraud cannot happen so there is some trail we leave behind as a customer to uh, so that these fraudsters can leverage so yes more education needed in this front and definitely uh, it will be win win situation for both banks also as well as the customer also if we uh, if we talk about uh, the market capitalization of fintech it just right now around 5% 95% of market is still acquired by the heritage bank or the private sector bank at all however if you consider the rate of uh, disruption it's close to 30% so every year these fintech are moving ahead uh, in the curve by 30% whereas the traditional bank is moving only 5% so to uh, fintech is the future fintech is inevitable it has already disrupted the banking industry so how traditional or heritage uh, or legacy organization can leverage the vast amount of data and capability already present into their system uh, there are a couple of ways i'll suggest uh, first is uh, cultivate the habit of the innovation legacy organization uh, in general do not foster the culture that rewards innovation so we uh, and cultural change is the first step to adopt the digital transformation at the heart so uh, we have to encourage the employees to become more receptive of the digital innovation that is happening around the world second thing is uh, we have to collaborate with the fintech startup as a legacy organization you have a different value chain present into a system if you collaborate with the fintech you can drive a much scalable and higher value in terms of uh, agility in terms of a uh, faster uh, resolution in terms of customer experience so second thing is a uh, legacy organization have to collaborate with the fintech startups right now and third is you have to prioritize the customer centricity as a legacy organization they have lots of initiatives that cannot that target the revenue that target the bottom line but they do not target what customer actually want so through data through analytics we actually understand the customer journey what customer actually want what customer what what are the products that can drive customer interest so through uh, digital through ai ml we can or legacy organization can understand the customer centricity better third is legacy or heritage organization have to invest in data and analytics 
leveraging data analytics to understand the customer behavior to reduce the risk and to drive the operational efficiency is a paramount importance in the future and to stay relevant in this uh, fast changing world and the last not the least uh, as a as we are increasing our digital footprint the risk and the fraud uh, uh, is very high so we have to invest in cyber security as well as the compliance norm that is evolving uh, uh, in the market so with uh, robust cyber security measures robust compliance measures the bank can transform themselves into a scalable agile and innovative organization that can compete with the fintech and also collab see uh, every uh, every sector every uh, industry is right now uh, facing the digital dronism digital dronism is the term which was introduced after we have seen uh, legacy organization just getting waken, waken up about how they delivering service how uh, how much digital footprint they have in their organization so to as industries are facing such kind of uh, digital dronism as an employee as a uh, student or as a future uh, digital transformation you have to aware about the technology where these uh, technology are moving right now as i say uh, said in the past uh, generative ai is creating lot of buzz right so these technology will come uh, at a much faster space uh, going forward so we have to be agile in learning continuous learning is the need of the hour whatever um, whatever degree you come in with the it industry if you are not relevant to the industry need you cannot survive you cannot thrive so my uh, my advice is to have the approach towards the continuous learning try and understand data data is the new oil as we can say every organization have vast amount of data and every organization is moving towards understanding the data and driving the insights from the data and delivering value so your second focus should be on the understanding data how ai and ml how machine learning model can actually drive value so you need to have the under, overall understanding of how data digital tools as well as the future tech can change the landscape if you have all these learnings in your kitty whatever degree you bring on to table like i have seen the people from bsc background are thriving in my organization like they are taking double promotions they are from bsc background right what differentiation they have they have the understanding of how tech is evolving they are making the self future ready so yes you have to be you have to adapt to the changing needs of the market and learn the technology day in and day out that's how you can thrive in the growing digital or virtual world